Hi, I'm Chris Anderson at the EE Web Tech Lab, and today I'm looking at the OM13320 development kit from NXP. The OM13320 is an I2C development kit that comes with a number of target devices for exploring the I2C bus. For those unfamiliar, I2C is a communications bus, and it requires only two signal lines. The protocol allows you to address individual ICs. It's been adopted by a number of manufacturers, and the bus is easy to use and makes your designs more efficient. The kit is centered around the OM13260 development board. There are two OM13303 GPIO targets, an OM13399 bridge board. There's also an OM13398 bus buffer board. We also have an OM13396 board, which is not normally included with the kit. The kit also includes a hardware pack with jumpers and standoffs for assembling your kit. Let's take a look at the hardware. The LPC1343 is an ARM Cortex-M3 based microcontroller. It integrates all the communications, including the I2C bus supporting FM Plus mode. The PCA9665 is an FM Plus parallel bus to I2C bus controller with a 68 byte buffer. The PCA9955 is a 16 channel LED driver with dimming and blinking control of RBGA LEDs. There are two PCA9672 8-bit port expanders, and those are addressable with up to 16 devices per I2C bus. They have an interrupt output to indicate data has changed on their inputs, so you don't need to be constantly pulling them with your microcontroller. Moving over to the OM13396 board, the PCAL6416A is a 16-bit port expander with up to two devices per I2C bus. It also has the interrupt output to indicate data has changed. It also has dual supply voltages, so you can have one supply on your I2C controller side, and you can have another on the input-output port side, so it allows for integrated voltage translation. To get started with this demo, you'll need to launch the NXP FM Plus software. It should recognize your device, and you'll click Go to Devices Selection. Again, we're going to select the PCL6416A I.O. expander, start device evaluation. And now it brings you up to the configuration tab for that device. So everything on here now is pertinent to the 6416A. First thing we should do is test the slave address. Make sure that the, uh, that the microcontroller actually sees the device, and it does. You can scroll through here and see all the different settings that are available. As mentioned before, they have the Agile I.O. and all of its configuration settings on here. But to start, I'm going to change all of the port zero I.O.s to outputs. and I can click through all of these switches or I can simply set this to zero, zero. And you'll see all the LEDs light green. Now if I want to, uh, I can change the outputs to low, and that will change the LEDs to red. And again, I can come up here and just set them all at once and change all the LEDs together. So now let's change all the ports back to, or all the IOs back to inputs. So we can look at some of the features there. Of course, the LEDs turn off. And if I push a button, you'll see that the input is indicated here that I, that I pushed IO0. Now sometimes, with the, without any pull-up resistors, you can get some noise on here and you can get some random inputs. I'm not seeing that now, but let's go make sure that all of our pull-ups are enabled. You can see right here that they're all disabled. Again, we're working on port zero, so we care about this row. So we'll set those all to high, and that will enable the pull-ups on all of these, uh, on all these inputs. And so again, we can come in and we can push the button. We'll see that it registers on the inputs. Now, uh, again, to illustrate the latching, if I push this button, which is uh, switch one, and I let go, 
you're not going to see that input register here. And that's the point of latching. So let's go enable latching. Again, I'll just turn on latching for or all pins on port zero. So now they're all latched. So now if I come back and I push switch zero and let go, you should still see this switch zero read low. If I push all of them, they should all read low on the next read. Now to look at the interrupt functionality of the 6416A, I'm going to go to the Agile I.O. Interrupt Configuration tab, and I'm going to unmask all of port zero. And what that will do is that will set it to generate an interrupt anytime any of these inputs change. So now they're all unmasked. If I press, for example, switch seven, you'll see that the interrupt LED has lit both on the 6416A as well as the 13260A motherboard. And since I'm latched, that interrupt will stay lit until the microcontroller comes and reads it. So it read and it disables. If I go ahead and disable latching, so I'll set this back to zero, zero again. Now you'll see that as long as I'm holding the button, the interrupt is lit, but as soon as I let go, the interrupt goes away. If your microcontroller is already handling a higher priority interrupt, you could miss this interrupt. The OM13320 FM Plus development board kit has many more features than we were able to touch on. The OM13320 has everything you'll need to get started and to really understand how to use the I2C bus. For more double E content and other videos, check out the EE Web Videos YouTube channel or eeweb.com.